no, 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 no. Oh, well, warning. Um, I'll be talking about opinions today, and whoa, whoa, just hold on. <laughs> Just remember at the end of the day, art is still super subjective and none of these are like end-all be-all rules. But today I'll be describing some patterns that I follow while making my own region and explain why I did so. Like what I said during my starter video, every time you do see these patterns in larger franchises, I think you should ask yourself two questions. Number one, why would they follow that pattern? And number two, does that reason apply to you? If a company makes a pattern just to reference themselves or to elicit nostalgia, that pattern shouldn't really apply to you. But if you think that pattern aids gameplay or helps the player experience, maybe that's something to look into. That's how I felt about what Pokemon fans call the Route 1 archetype, which are mons you encounter very early on in the game. Today I'll be describing some mons one might see pretty early on in my stem-based creature world, as I explain my take on the Route 1 archetype they reference. So without further ado, here's the Regional Rodent. When you start playing a creature collecting game, every new creature is a surprise factor. If you show off your wildest designs from the get-go, not only would many people be turned off, but more importantly, the other designs later in the game might look less impressive. Thus, I believe that Route 1 Mons have mostly been cute animals that most people could recognize. It's squirrel toll. Gotta get squirrel. Ooh, puppy! You gotta get the puppy. I mean, bird dog! Rodents and small mammals fit the bill quite nicely. They're pretty small and recognizable. So, for my stem based region, it made the most sense to talk about lab rats. This is Musmus, a small lab mouse with fur resembling a lab coat. They're wearing a lot of personal protective equipment, also known as PPE. Depending on the job, different PPE are required from goggles, gloves, closed toed shoes, lab coats, but also hair ties, ear protections, helmets, respiratory masks, just to name a few. So that's the lab part of lab rats. What about the rat part? Well, I like. It's a lab mouse. Lab mice are more commonly used than lab rats nowadays, so here's Musculmus. Musculmus is muscular because the species name for the lab mouse is Mus Musculus, which is the same name as a common house mouse. But don't worry, these mice aren't plucked out of their houses. Rather, these are special strains of mice bred for research purposes. I know a lot of quizzes like to ask why we use these mice as model organisms, which are species we use to test treatments on instead of testing on humans. Here's two big reasons. Number one, they quickly mature and breed, and in large numbers at that. And two, mice are relatively close to humans compared to some of the other model organisms like yeast or fruit flies. Also, one last thing. Why are mice even called musculines, like muscles? In fact, it's the other way around. In Latin, musculis does mean mouse, and muscles were called little mice because biceps looked like them. Here's one of the more controversial archetypes of the early round. I went on and on on how the first route has these cute and recognizable animals, but bugs? Most people are scared of bugs. Well, one can argue that it gives a contrast to the rest of the early route, but I think the regional bug also harkens back to the origins of Pokemon. In an interview, Game Freak founder Satoshi Tajiri mentioned his childhood hobby of catching bugs as an inspiration of Pokemon, where you can catch and raise creatures. You see, some insects are known for metamorphosis, where they look wildly different throughout different stages in their life. For complete metamorphosis, that goes from a larva, a pupa, to an adult. In fact, most people call Pokemon's quote-unquote evolution process to be more like metamorphosis than the biological definition of evolution. So the regional bug is a perfect role to show off this dramatic change that most other creatures don't really go under, at least in our world. So, when it comes to STEM, I felt like the easiest bug reference was the computer bug. Larving is a bunch of pixels, I guess 
their voxels because they aren't flat, but they're weaving up and down like a snake. But the name is actually referencing the Turing machine. Named after Alan Turing, the Turing machine is a model that can theoretically execute any computer algorithm. The simplest model would operate on a strip of symbols that it could read and write on, but the strip would have to be infinitely long to execute every algorithm conceivable. By the way, an algorithm just means a set of rules a program follows. I know people use it to mean stuff like recommended videos, but it actually means it's a set of rules that a search engine follows to make those recommendations. Anyways, our larva is making a little shell to become Compupa. This is where I barge in to say that I'm technically planning to make my own game one day, but all the stats and abilities here are related to Pokemon rules. Compupa is based off of the Commodore Pet, which was one of the first personal computers. Before that, computers had to take up whole rooms just to work, but this was the beginning of the technological revolution. Ironically, the last stage of this line is the simplest to explain. Hacktera is like a cyberpunk hacker, and their wings are like a bunch of binary numbers. So why do computers use binary anyways? Binary means two, so there's only two kinds of numbers here, ones and zeros. In circuitry, these could be called being on and off. So data can be quickly stored by turning a value on or off. This value alone is called a bit. 8 bits is a byte, which most computers go by, so you got mega, giga, terabytes that you see in computer memories and whatnot. Hacktera is a reference to a moth found in Harvard University's Mark II computer back in 1947, where they made a little joke of being like, oh, first case of an actual bug being found. Uh, by the way, it wasn't called a bug because of this moth. People already called computer mistakes bugs back then. Alright, I'll be talking about my designs first this time, before going into early route birds in general. So, my birds are based off of kinematics. Kine means move in Greek, like in words such as kinetic energy. Kinematics deals with how objects move. So, let's start with position. This is position, a hummingbird who can stay in place while flying, like most hummingbirds. You see, I tried to give it a little position marker symbol, like the you are here marks on maps. So if I could tell where the position is at one point in time, and then the position at some time later, the rate of how much they moved is called velocity. Velocity is a vector, which means it has direction and magnitude. Speed alone is just the magnitude part of velocity, as velocity should also tell you in which direction you're going at that moment. So Velowing here has the fastest speed stat of the line, because the evolution is more about acceleration. Acceleration is also a vector. In fact, you could find acceleration just like how you found velocity from position. Just like how velocity was changed of position over time, acceleration is change in velocity over time. Now these delta symbols here, like the triangles in these formulas, those can be rewritten as something called derivatives, which tells you the slope of the function. But I'll have more on that in another video. Excelif doesn't have the highest base speed of its line, but I know a lot of Poke fans would know just how strong speed boost is. Yes, acceleration, getting faster every turn. Note, getting slower is also considered acceleration. It's just that any change in velocity is called acceleration. So yeah, about Route 1 birds, how would someone make a three-stage line that's not a completely metamorphosizing bug? Well, that's hard to say. Although baby birds do look very different from adults, most people probably wouldn't want to catch a naked baby bird, especially not at the very beginning of the game. Instead of knocking down to a two-stager like the rodents, Game Freak later found a way to get around this issue. You change species. If you could hop around from a little songbird to a threatening bird of prey, the changes would feel drastic enough to encourage people to evolve them. But what I appreciated about these species hops were that they weren't random, they often shared the same order. Birds, or aves in Latin, is a class of animals, and one step down, there are several orders. 
they could give some inspiration that gives some cohesions between the designs, like focusing on the beak that could hollow out trees. For example, my line goes from a hummingbird, then a swift, as they all have almost no legs and just feetsies because they fly around so much. So cute rodent two-stager, a complete metamorphosizing bug, and three different bird species from the same order. A final reminder, I repeat, that everything here isn't some kind of a rulebook. These are just patterns that I personally noticed, and I would only recommend these if you're kind of stuck when making the early areas of your creature world. And these aren't the only mods that are in my early round, but I wanted to go over these because I've seen a lot of people try to follow these patterns as well. At the end of the day, these points are just something to consider, but if someone doesn't follow these rules, I mean, that's completely fine. Let them do what they want to do. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you like these kind of videos, feel free to subscribe, because I have over a hundred designs based off of the STEM concepts, though I'll have other Fakemon videos as well. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.